In this video, we're going to look at a clip from an episode of Star Trek Picard from season three. We're going to be learning really useful words and expressions in context. We're going to be pulling them out of context, talking about what they mean and how you can use them in your daily life. Some of this stuff is not just what a phrase means, but it's connotation, the feeling that people get when you say it. So we'll be exploring that again with a scene from Star Trek Picard. If you have any questions as we go, let me know in the comments. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe. And now let's get into the video. We're going to go through this scene from Star Trek Picard season three. If you're not a Star Trek fan, that's fine. Although season three is very good. I enjoyed it a lot. Seasons one and two of Star Trek Picard were uh, trash, terrible, awful, bad, no good. But season three was amazing. I really enjoyed it. Um, so let's watch this scene and pull out some useful words and phrases from it. So I want you to listen carefully. Turn your ears on. See if you can catch what they say. And when we pull up a word, I want you to think if you can put it into a sentence. Try to find a place for it. All right? All right. Okay. Here we go. Shall we listen carefully? Thank you for somewhat of a urbanista. I enjoy you the occasional... It's a little... Captain Riker, I take you for somewhat of a urbanista. All right, that's quick, right? Captain Riker, I take you for somewhat of a urbanista. All right. Captain Riker, I take you for somewhat of a urbanista. Now, urbanista, in this case, he's referring to bourbon. We're not going to learn the word urbanista. I'm not even sure that's in the dictionary, but often if you have. Easta at the end, you're sort of an enthusiast of that. So a fashionista, for example. But a bourbonista, we get a clue from that, that he's an enthusiast of bourbon. He knows a lot about bourbon, which is a specific type of whiskey that comes from, is it Kentucky or Tennessee? Bourbon comes from, anyway. So I take you for, this is the one that I want to talk about. What does it mean to take someone for something? I take you for a. Uh. Well, what is the context here? If I take you for something, I might be making an assumption about you. I may be right, I may be wrong, but I'm making an assumption about you and I'm stating that. And then you're going to probably correct me or confirm that that's an, a correct assumption, right? If I see you doing something that I find strange, that is outside of my expectations, then I will do the opposite. I'll say, I didn't take you for a, right? So if I have a friend who's very health conscious, exercises 14 times a week, eats extremely healthy, takes a lot of supplements, unbelievably healthy life habits, and then I see them whip out a cigarette and start smoking, I think, I think, this person is extremely health conscious, and yet here they are smoking. I didn't take you for a smoker. Well, clearly I'm wrong. So I'm making a statement about a previous assumption I had that has now been corrected. I didn't take you for. I made an incorrect assumption, and now I'm stating it because clearly I see that the assumption I had about you previously is incorrect, and I may be using it as a conversation starter, perhaps. Okay, so let's review that one more time here. Captain Riker, I take you for somewhat of a bourbonista. 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 Again, is that Kentucky or Tennessee? Um, bourbon is whiskey from Kentucky. Okay, it's Kentucky. I, I knew that. I knew that in my brain. But for some reason, my part of a little voice in my head said, no, it's, it's Tennessee. Oh, I know why. I think... Because Jack Daniels is from Tennessee, and it's not bourbon because it's from Tennessee. And then everything else, because it's from Kentucky, 
is bourbon. I think that's how it works. Anyway, okay, let's let's proceed. Hopefully, we understand. I take you four. It's pretty straightforward. Now keep keep listening. I enjoy the occasional. Captain Riker, I take you for somewhat of a bourbonista. I enjoy the occasional old fashioned. What gave you that idea? All oh, the BB. What gave you that idea? Old fashioned is a cocktail made with bourbon. It's actually very delicious. I like it. But he says, what gave you that idea? So I think you can probably guess why this is here. What gave you that idea is, what is the thing, the clue, the hint that suggested to you that I am a bourbonista? What is the thing that tells you that, for example, I'm extremely health conscious, right? The clues, whatever those are, right? So what, what details about Captain Riker tell Captain What's-His-Face, what's his name? I forget his name in, the, in this show, um, that Riker is a bourbonista, and he's about to explain that. I enjoy the occasional old fashioned. What gave you that idea? All oh, the bebop that I. What gave you that idea? I had to purge from the system when I took the chair. Speaks. Okay, that's kind of complicated. The bebop that I had to purge from the system when I took the chair. So the system is the computer on this spaceship where they are. And uh, purge means to get rid of it, right? Bebop is a type of music. And I think it's a subcategory of jazz. Riker likes jazz, so he's somehow making this connection between the fact that Riker, who was the previous captain, had a bunch of this type of music. The new captain of this ship is making the assumption that because Riker likes this type of music, therefore he must also like bourbon because he likes this type of music, and he's correct about that. So pretty good deductive skills. So if you if you're ever wondering what clues you give that allow people to make assumptions about the type of person you are or aspects about you, you might say, well, what gave you that idea? Either because you're genuinely curious or because you feel like you're being judged and you want to push back against it. Oh, what gave you that idea? I'm a very patient person. What are you talking about, right? You're sort of pushing back against an accusation, perhaps. Okay. Dear freewheeling Give you that idea. All oh, the bebop that I had to purge from the system when I took the chair it speaks to your freewheeling, loosey goosey, Kentucky mash kind of style. Not a fan of jazz. Oh, he does say Kentucky mash. Okay, so it is Kentucky. There you go. Freewheeling, loosey goosey, Kentucky mash kind of style. That's a, not a fan. I'm, re I'm realizing how dense that section is. If you you really have to pay attention to every word in that to really put it all together. Um, that is an English learner's nightmare, right? I there. enjoy the occasional old fashioned. What gave you that idea? All oh, the bebop that I had to purge from the system when I took the chair. It speaks to your freewheeling, loosey goosey, Kentucky mash kind of style. It speaks to your freewheeling, loosey goosey, Kentucky mash kind of style. Kentucky mash is what you would use to make bourbon. Freewheeling is sort of freestyle. Lucy Goosey is very relaxed without having strict rules, right? So he's saying that the f he's making a lot of assumptions here. This is kind of all about his assumptions. He's saying that because you had this type of music previously, bebop, that sort of evidence that indicates that you like bourbon, because the person who likes bourbon would also have a certain style, which is freewheeling doing whatever you want, not following the rules, loosey-goosey, kind of relaxed, not adhering strictly to deadlines and tight schedules, kind of style. Right? So this is all around the same idea of the assumptions that are being made about Riker, about what he's drinking. So actually, I think it's a very, I think it's a very cleverly written little bit of dialogue here, and there are so many interesting little pieces to pull out. We're only 15 seconds in. We're not, I mean, we're going to go through the rest of this pretty quickly, but that beginning piece is so dense and I think interesting. So now that we have this piece, this is sort of the original chunk. We have, I take you for what gave you that idea and it speaks to that. It indicates that, it's a clue about that. Let's go back and watch the whole first 15 seconds and try to just sort of put it all together. Captain Riker, I take you for somewhat of a urbanista. 
I enjoy the occasional old-fashioned. What gave you that idea? All the bebop that I had to purge from the system when I took the chair. It speaks to your freewheeling, loosey-goosey, Kentucky mash kind of style. Not a fan of jazz. Mm, no, I am not. I like... Got it? Okay, so... You can kind of see how all of those things fit together. All of those things are kind of connected. Okay, now we're gonna we're gonna move on. Listen out for the usual structure. I like meter. I like keeping tempo and time, which is why you will probably find this inspection boring for the likes of you two. They're inspecting the ship, or they're pretending to inspect the ship. And he says, "We're not going to write this down, but the likes of you two means you people who are like you." including you two. Oh, it's just all in advance of the uh, fleet exercises for Frontier Day. Well, ensuring the condition of our starships would be boring. Well, we won't be blowing things up, taking or engaging in fire. We won't be blowing things up. Crash landing expectedly or unexpectedly, you know, the usual for you boys. Okay, so he's kind of making fun of these two. They're actually here kind of in a deceitful way to make a request that's not approved of. It's an interesting part of the story, but they're famous. These two now old guys are famous for getting into all kinds of adventures with lots of excitement, explosions, crash landings. The usual for you two. So he's the opposite. He doesn't like crazy unexpected things. He likes meter he likes precision he he likes following the rules that's his style and he's kind of mocking these two older guys because he's against whatever they have planned he knows that there's something crazy that they have planned that they're about to ask him to participate in he's going to say no right and so he's kind of calling out but this is normal for you guys what the usual crash landings and all of that stuff but I'm not, I'm not going to uh, facilitate that. I'm, I'm not going to help you in any way. But the usual as a phrase can be used in a lot of different ways. If you're a regular at a restaurant, for example, and the waiters and waitresses know you very well, one thing people might say is, I'll have the usual. So the usual there means the thing I usually order if I usually get the same thing every time. So that's the thing we might say. The usual for me, though, in terms of activities might be what I get up to usually on a normal day. Instead of saying what I usually do on a typical day, I might just say, you know, the usual. That is also a common expression that people use when you're catching up with someone, when you're talking with a colleague. They know the type of stuff that you do. It's a little bit of a lazy reply, but someone says, hey, how's it going? How have you been? Or what have you been doing? What have you been up to recently? And you say, ah, the usual the usual okay i've been up to the normal things that i'm up to which means there's nothing special going on with me it doesn't say anything specifically about what things those are right because you know me you already know what those things are right so in this case the usual is blowing stuff up and crash landings okay nope you will find our engines pristine our hull in pristine means clean tact and you run your finger on pretty much any given surface here you're going to find it dust free <laughs> now that's pretty quick but i want you to listen out for any given surface okay listen out for that nope you will find our engines pristine our hull intact and you run your finger on pretty much any given surface here you're going to find it dust free <laughs> and you run your finger on pretty much any and you run your finger on pretty much any given surface here you're going to find it dust free <laughs> and you run your finger on pretty much any given surface here, you're going to find it dust-free. <laughs> any given surface, okay? The engines, the hull will be intact, and the engines are pristine, and you run your finger on any given surface, and you will find it dust-free. Dust-free, if you put your finger anywhere on the ship, you're not going to see anything on your finger. Any given is very important here. Any given means it doesn't matter which one it is. So it doesn't have to be all of them, but any one it is. Any given is a common expression that we use to say, it doesn't matter regardless of which one, right? Any given weekend, 
you will find me on the golf course at 7 a.m. For example, <laughs> not actually true in my case. I wish. But that means pick a weekend. Last weekend, next weekend, this weekend, 10 weekends from now. At 7 a.m., you will find me on the golf course. That means I golf regularly every single weekend. So pick one. It doesn't matter which one. It's basically saying, I am very consistent in this, right? There's a famous movie called Any Given Sunday. And it's uh, it's, a, it's about, I believe it's about high school, high, high school football or college football. I actually forget. It's been forever since I've seen it, right? It's a, it's a football movie, I think. And uh, I actually don't know why it's called Any Given Sunday because it's been so long since I've seen it. But the idea of any given Sunday would be no matter which Sunday it is, basically, something. No matter which Sunday it is, something, right? Any given thing in my closet is generally freshly washed. That means you're not going to find a lot of dirty stuff in my closet. Whatever you find, it's going to be clean. Okay, any given thing. So that's a really, actually, really useful expression there. It's simple, right? But it's really useful. It's slightly different than saying all of something. All Sundays, for example. All Saturdays. It's just different. It's a, it's a more nuanced way to express it. I like it. I like it. No doubt. Indeed. Which is why um, Captain Riker and I would like to change course. Change course means just go a different direction. Where? The Riken system. That's at the edge of Federation space in the opposite direction of our intended course twice the time. At half warp, double the speed, it's an even split. And why would we do that? Bragging rights. Bragging rights. What are bragging rights? So they're at now making their request. They're requesting of this captain that they change course or go a different direction. We already know he's not going to like it because he he likes music with meter. He's a very precise person. He likes to follow the rules, right? And this guy is freewheeling and loosey-goosey. Or uh, was it loosey-goosey? Yeah. So bragging rights are when you accomplish something and your goal, or when you're striving to accomplish something, your goal is not necessarily money, your goal is not necessarily for the thing that you get when you do it, but essentially you're motivated by the fact that you can then say you did it once you did it. Hey, hey, we did this thing, right? Once we do this, we will have bragging rights. To brag is to say, ha, look what I did, right? So it's a common expression that we would use for that sort of thing. When the motivation is not, maybe the typical motivation of money or power or some reward. It's not the thing I get. It's the fact that I feel proud of myself for doing it. I'm motivated by a sense of, I just want to do this thing, right? I climbed Mount Everest. Why? Why would anyone do it? It's dangerous. It's expensive. It costs tons of money. Why would anyone, anybody decide to climb Mount Everest? Purely bragging rights. Basically, so that I can say I did it, so that I know I did it. That's why I did it, purely for bragging rights. You have the right to do it because you actually did it. So that's that's the idea of bragging rights. Okay, we have one more, uh, I think, to look at. No, no, that's the last one we're going to look at. But let's look at it in context again. Why would we do that? Bragging rights. You show the efficiency of the new Titan. It's a great story for Frontier Day. It's the uh, current former captain, mm -hmm. putting it through the paces, run a little coal to the engine. <laughs> putting it through the paces. Putting it through the paces means sort of um, um, if you put something through its paces, you, you test it a little bit to make sure it's working. We're not going to write that one down, but you, um, you essentially often it's something new or something that's just been broken in. It's kind of like breaking something in, right? To put it through its paces is to let it stretch to sort of get it used to operating essentially in this in this context specifically so hopefully now that we've talked about it speaks to your right what gave you that idea i take you for or i didn't take you for the usual any given 
and bragging rights. Hopefully you're starting to get a sense for how these can actually be used. I would encourage you to practice using them on your own. Try to make your own examples. That's the best way to really learn and really master any expression, any phrase, any word. If you have any questions about any of these, let me know in the comments if you haven't already done so. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe. And also, check out my full course, which is free, Natural English Conversations, in the links in the description. Thank you.